Well, uh, Garrett, Kevin, and I were talking last night about considering a new hairstyle for Garrett, and he was really interested in the idea. So, um, so we contacted uh, our barber, Isak, and um, right now we're in his studio. And we're about to do it. We were about to do it, right? And I was thinking, wait a minute. This is some really compelling material. Like, the world wants to know about this story. So, I got, I got some iPhones together, and here we are. And I'm really excited to see how it turns out. Oh, man. Um, that's a real tough question. All right, I'll give you the first one that comes to mind is uh, Sweeney Todd. I think I'm going for that vibe, but documentary style. And what I'm really trying to communicate through this documentary is... Um, is the universal in the individual, right? And so I'm trying to show this journey of this one, one kid, and uh, and we can all see a little bit of Garrett in ourselves, you know. So it is an inherently subjective form, and um, I'm going to embrace it. I do believe that this film is something that people will want to watch, and in fact should watch, because here we gathered four friends. And we, we really tried to do something special, you know? We tried to change a kid's life through his hair. And it's really phenomenal how, mu how, um, how important one's external, experience can, external appearance can be to one's experience in life, you know? And honestly, it was amazing to see the tension between, um, between us, to be honest, was um, one of the most beautiful things that could ever be captured on film, you know? And I think sitting behind on the camera, I saw that Garrett, Garrett sort of needed some help. And it was so hard for me, as his friend, to sit back as, as the filmmaker, you know? I had to be objective um, and really just watch this play out, even though I knew that I was also a part of it. And it was, it was incredible. I felt like I was having an out-of-body experience, so. It was worth it, and I think, I think people, I think the world deserves to see this. So, yeah, this film would be so much better because we messed up pretty badly on Garrett's haircut. I mean, if we had just, like, came through a pass with flying colors, and, you know, he looked like he paid, like, $40 for his haircut, it would be like, the moral of the story would be like, damn, Isaac needs to open his own barbershop, right? And that's, like, that's lame. But since we messed up so badly, like... What is the moral of the story, you know? It just becomes this huge, huge conflict. Like, do you trust your friends? Can you trust your friends? It's when they make you an object of, of art or of examination, you know? Like, when I had the camera over Garrett's forehead, I felt like I was, in a sense, dehumanizing him. And, and I think... The fact that we messed up his haircut shows how, how sometimes um, art takes precedence over friendship, and that's what it comes down to, right? So, I saw that the haircut was going, the haircut was going awry, and in the back of my mind, I was thinking, "Oh God, this is really bad for Garrett." But really, all I was thinking was, "Oh man, this is so good for the film, where we are all artists." engage in this expansive drama where Garrett is perhaps the the greatest artist because he is the one who put his body at stake. I'm not putting anything at stake. Isaac's putting his now now declining barber career at stake, but it wasn't too promising to start with. But Garrett's hair Garrett's hair is a 19-year legacy that, that he gave up to art. And so, I think the beauty comes from Garrett, both from the outside and in the inside.